and let the church office know if you would like one. Um, they will be available to pick up after worship on Sunday, or if you need assistance and would like to have one delivered, you can let the church office know as well. So we have, we still have some available. A few notes to share regarding some special services. It's hard to believe on a beautiful Sunday, sunny morning with blue sky and there's no snow on the ground and no forecast of snow. I know you're all thankful for that. But it's hard to believe that I'm sharing the season of Advent um, gatherings. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. And throughout the season of Advent, we're going to um, be taking a look at how to find and what it means to find hope and peace, joy, and love in the midst of the chaos. And maybe the chaos in our lives and the chaos of the world around us. And uh, there are some special services. Ad additionally, the Blue Christmas service will be held on Sunday, December 12 at 4 p.m. here in the sanctuary. We're going to be going outside at one point during the service. So if it's raining or snowing, we're going to defer to the following Sunday, December 19. So the first option will be December 12. If it's a if it's a weather reason, rain or snow will delay it until the following week. Don't worry, there will be an invitation and more details that will get sent out to you in the next couple of weeks. On Sunday morning, December 19, we will be um, led in worship by the children of Fair Street. So the children are going to lead us in the children's Christmas program on December 19. And uh, parents, please be sure to check your email with information regarding that, or you can check in with Valerie or Peggy about any of those details. And then finally, our Christmas Eve candlelight service is set and scheduled, and we're planning for um, at Christmas Eve at 7 p.m. And it will be a special time in which we gather, we'll be able to gather in person and even over Zoom once again, as we do. Um, and we do hope that many of you will be able to join us in person for this special service. Again, know that we can accommodate 70 people safely in this season and um, Zoom will continue to remain available. Our mission of the month for November continues through next Sunday in which we are receiving monetary offering gifts for the work of Shriners Children Hospital. So the jar is in the back um, of the sanctuary or you can just mail it into the church, but please be sure to mark on there that it is for the November um, mission of the month and it will be allocated appropriately. Next Sunday will be the final month, the final Sunday for Shriners. And then uh, we will also share with you what the December mission of the month is um, and how you can support the December's mission. Please note finally that the office hours for this week are Monday through Wednesday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the office will be closed on Thursday and fri Friday in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday. With all of those announcements, I am confident that there's probably one that I've forgotten. Um, but be sure to check your email tomorrow as they will be in the weekly and uh, up on the website over the course of the week. Should you have a prayer request, a joy or concern, you are welcome in the, on Zoom for friends on Zoom. You are welcome to send one in the chat portion of the Zoom meeting and friends in person, you are welcome to send me a text um, on, from your phone. And if you don't have the number, all you have to do is you can just scan this QR code on the back, pull up the camera on your phone and uh, look like you're gonna take a picture of that and it will drop down saying, um, you wanna send a message and it will come right to me. All right, so that's how you can do that. I think this morning, the weather is just right that our internet connection seems to be holding its own. <laughs> but if you want to support the, the internet connection and power down your device or put it on airplane mode, that would be greatly appreciated as well. Friends, people of God, whether this is your first time worshiping with us or you have been here all along, regardless of who you are, where you come from, where you live, how you get around, regardless of who you love, what you look like, or the color of your skin, whatever it is that you think hinders you from belonging and being in this space, please know and believe that your presence is a gift. 
And we are grateful to God that you are here with us in these moments, in this space. And it is in God's faithful and steadfast love that we who belong in this world and in this space have been breathed into this place as God has breathed us in to God's presence as we gather from many homes here in God's home. And whether your week has been filled with joy and celebration, grief or in sorrow or even anxiety in the midst of the chaos, it is here where we can be reminded that God is with us, breathing life and hope into our lives. And it is in these moments where we can set aside the chaos of our lives and the chaos of our world, and we can pause to take that breath in. So I invite you to take that breath in with me, breathe in and out. As we breathe in God's love and God's grace, and we breathe out all of the chaos and the stuff of our lives, and we set it aside for just a moment where we can gather and settle in and rest in God's presence, in God's love, and in God's welcome as God greets you this morning. Grace and peace be to you from the one who is, who was, and is to come. Amen? And amen. The peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to join me in our call to worship as printed in the bulletin. Lord God, the words, Jesus is King, comes easily to our lips. Yet we often fail to grasp the significance of what they mean for us. In this service, help us worship you in spirit and in truth. And give us a vision for how we may live in homage to you every day of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are, also, are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. So I invite you to stand as we sing hymn number 342, Rejoice the Lord is King, verse 1. 342, Rejoice the Lord is King. Come on up. We're going to have you sit right there in the sunshine today. How's that? Good. Watch the cords. We don't want anybody to trip this morning. How are you? Good. Good morning. You're coming up. That's great. That's great. We're so excited that you guys are here this morning. And all month long, we have been talking about prayer, right? And you read um, last week, I think, in Children and Worship, you read this awesome book on prayer. And uh, maybe they'll be able to show it to you again. Um, but we've been learning a verse about being reminded of when we pray, who answers and who listens and who hears us? Do you remember? God? God hears us, right? 
And so we've been learning that verse from Jeremiah um, that it's sandwiched in between a couple verses where it says, um, God promises to do this stuff in our lives. And because God promises some good things in our lives and to be with us, God knows that we're going to pray and come to God. And so the verse is, then you will call on me and come and pray to me. And what? And I will listen. And so we're going to do a recap and then we're going to do one more quick thing, okay? So it's then, then you, and remember this is will, and the farther out we go means the more often and the longer we'll do it, will, and then call, call, you guys got that, call me, and then and come and pray to me. And God says, I will listen. And that's from Jeremiah 29. And so that's just a great reminder that wraps up this month's prayer. And, um, and so, but what's happening this week? What is special about this week? It's Thanksgiving, right? It's when maybe hopefully we'll gather with friends or family and um, we'll have delicious food, right? And maybe some ice cream. I think I'm having ice cream. I think I'm having ice cream. And Jello? Well, you've got your whole menu planned out already. Jello and ice cream. Which, what more could they ask for, right? What? I still didn't hear. Brownies. Brownies to go with the ice cream. Exactly. Brownies, ice cream, and Jello. A Thanksgiving child's menu dream. And the whipped cream. See, now we're just adding things because it's, it's delicious sounding. And now we're all going to be hungry. But how many of you go around the table and say something that you're thankful for on Thanksgiving? Do you guys do that? I thought it would be fitting that maybe we say one thing that we're thankful to God for. Because last week, and when we were talking about prayer, we talked about how we can say thanks, God, for this, right? and for something in our lives. So do you have something that you're thank you want to say thanks God for? Everything that you have in your life. That's awesome. Family. family. Thanks God for family and thanks God for everything I have in my life and your what? Your animals? You have 11 animals? Oh, that's right. You have chickens. Six chickens, three fish, one hamster, and one dog. We're going to let you do the math. But we are thankful for our animals and our family and everything that is in our lives. And um, you know what I'm thankful for today? Well, I am thankful for being here at church, but I know that you're shielding your eyes right now, but I'm super thankful for the sunshine because it just makes it a beautiful day, right? And it's a day where we can go outside and play and um, go for walks and everything. So I'm thinking, how about if I say a prayer, say, thanking God for all the stuff that we name, and then you guys can go to children worship, all right? All right. Thank you, God, for your love and always being with us. And thank you that you have given us so many things. So today we thank you for all of the things in our lives. We thank you for our family and we thank you for our many pets and animals that we have at home. And we thank you for the sunshine and as a reminder of the warmth of your love. And so we give this day to you. And all God's children said, amen. All right. So next week, um, before you go to children worship, next week, we have a special day next week. You know what we're going to be doing? 
No, well, we're going to start Advent, but what's on, what's over there? The, what's right here? Baptism. baptism. We're going to have a celebrate baptism next week. There's a baby that's going to be here and we're going to baptize and, um, and it's going to be a special day. So we hope that you'll be able to join us for that. Okay. All right, you guys can go to children and worship and we'll see you after worship. Just again, watch the chords. People of God, we cannot come before God unless we are first honest with ourselves about who we are, about the mistakes that we make, and about how well or poorly we care for our others. And so it is in this spirit that I invite you to join me as we offer our prayers to God. Righteous God, you have crowned Jesus Christ Lord, as Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him and are slow to acknowledge his rule. We give allegiance to the powers of this world and fail to be governed by justice and love. In your mercy, forgive us. Raise us to acclaim him as ruler of all, that we may be loyal ambassadors, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this good news and the assurance of God's grace and forgiveness that in Christ we have the forgiveness of sins and the riches of God's grace. This grace was given to us to preach to the nations the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery for which ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things for this grace, for this reminder that we have a new opportunity to live forward and live a new opportunity and life living as we are called to live according to scripture, we can simply say thanks be to God and we can live our lives out of gratitude as we are according to how we are called in scripture in which we read this verse together. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. God, help us to hear your holy word with open hearts so that we may truly understand. And in understanding that we may believe, and in believing that we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord and King. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 136. As you know that we have been in a series of prayer, and we this morning we wrap up that series. The first week it was around the prayer of help. Help me, God. Help others, God. A simple prayer, crying out for help. And then last week we focused on giving thanks. Thank you, God. Thanks for the things in our lives and naming it and acknowledging it. And so this morning we turn to Psalm 136, in which this psalm is one that holds true to the patterns of the many other psalms, in which the way it begins, it also ends. So oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. His love endures forever. Yes, there is much repetition in this psalm, and some of you might even think, wait, we heard this story last week. And while that might be partially true, we didn't hear the entire story. 
And so this psalm is a retelling of the story of the Israelites in which they are breaking down the entire story. And once again, pausing to acknowledge God's steadfast and faithful love, in faithful, enduring love. They are noting Yahweh's presence and care and provisions in how God showed up in their lives through the mountaintop experiences and through the valleys and the wilderness moments. From the simplest of ways through creation to the overwhelming ways of leading them up out of slavery. And so as we prepare to read this scripture this morning, I actually am going to invite you to read it with me. Because this psalm, as with other psalms, are meant to be read responsively in a, in a choral way. So it is, um, I don't have the pew Bible number, page number, I apologize, Psalm 136. I think that you might even know the words as you hear them. And uh, I will read the first lines and you are invited to read um, the response for his steadfast love endures forever. Two final notes before we begin reading. As you read, listen and be mindful of how you are reading and responding. And as you listen, listen and be mindful of the story that's told. Let us read Psalm 136 together. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, and now you reply, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who spread out the earth on the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who struck Egypt through their firstborn, for his steadfast love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, for his steadfast love endures forever. With a strong hand and an outstretched arm, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who divided the Red Sea in two, for his steadfast love endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his steadfast love endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who led his people through the wilderness, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who struck down great kings, for his steadfast love endures forever. And killed famous kings, for his steadfast love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his steadfast love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, for his steadfast love endures forever. And gave their land as a heritage, for his steadfast love endures forever. A heritage to his servant Israel, for his steadfast love endures forever. It is he who remembered us in our low estate, for his steadfast love endures forever and rescued us from our foes, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh, for his steadfast love endures forever. And then we read verse 26 together. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. People of God, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So it would be back in 2012 when I would find myself standing at an open door wondering what in the world have I gotten myself into. Looking back, I was now wishing to return to the safe place where I had just been moments prior. And looking ahead, I watched the person who stepped out ahead of me. And then with a nudge from the person behind me, literally on my back, I took that step and jumped. 
falling out the door of the plane. Yes, it was a once in a lifetime, and I am good with only a once in a lifetime thing called skydiving. Free falling from 10,000 feet for what seemed like eternity. I'm confident my eyes were shut tightly behind the goggles that I was wearing. The tandem instructor reminding me to breathe as he yelled with excitement. I'm not sure why he was so excited. When suddenly we halted and once our parachute opened, the loud blast from the air from free falling through the sky hit radio silence and we began to glide through the air, slipping through a cloud. It was amazing, simply amazing. And the instructor actually said to me, you can't get much closer to God than this. Look, I mean, look up and out at this beauty of this place where we live. It's amazing. And so as I worked to catch my breath from free falling, I now had an opportunity to look up and to look out, to see the entire Hudson Valley from the sky as we softly glided to the ground. It was simply breathtaking. To go through a cloud, to witness the beauty of God's creation, I was in awe. And once we landed, I actually remember thinking, phew, wow, I'm glad I'm safely on the ground. It was amazing, but phew, wow. Now there are several different ways and tones in which we say, wow, that was amazing, right? Have you ever thought about it? There's different ways in which we say, wow. Anne Lamott in her book, Help Thanks Wow, actually discusses different types. And I add to some of the descriptions, some of them like, wow, that was delicious. After tasting something, now all of you on Thanksgiving have to respond that way after you have it, right? You're gonna have to be like, wow, that was amazing. That was so good because you've never tasted anything like it and it far exceeded your expectations or after receiving a gift that you had no idea that it was coming your way. There is the, wow, look at that view. Look, that is so beautiful, just wow. Where we are almost left speechless because we've never seen anything like it before as we soak in the beauty of the world and creation around us. And there is the, phew, wow, I'm glad to have survived that and that it's over. That was a close call. Phew. These are the expressions after a marathon day, whether figuratively or literally, after wrapping up cancer treatments, recovering from an accident, or looking back and thinking, wow, I didn't think I was going to make it, and I didn't think I had it in me, but here I am. There is the awe and wonder of excitement of a child upon witnessing the first snowfall. There is the wow, this is unbelievable. When we look at someone with disbelief, when the doctor tells us that we're cancer free, when we witness a birth, when a loved one shares some hopeful news, when we discover news that we never thought possible, tragedy or otherwise. We simply, when we are simply at times caught off guard, we're left with nothing else to say other than, wow. Have you ever had any of these moments in your life where you found yourself amazed at the circumstances around you? Did you pause to name it? Did you pause to celebrate and proclaim it? And maybe more specifically, have you ever witnessed moments in your life when you experience God's presence, maybe like Moses experiencing God's presence at the burning bush, or Mary when she and Elizabeth met the disciples, or maybe the apostles and the people throughout all of scripture in which they witnessed a miracle and just stood there amazed and in awe. Have you 
ever witness the handiwork of God in your life or in the lives of the ones around you where you just stood amazed at what just happened, in which you had no idea what just happened, but you knew something just happened. Scripture holds an abundance of stories in which people are amazed and praise God for the healing or miracle they experienced and witnessed. And oftentimes, they would pause and acknowledge God at work. They would acknowledge and name the healing work of Jesus Christ. And it seems that in my experience that when we pause to name and acknowledge the amazing acts of God that just unfolded, it might be easier to recall it later because when we speak it out loud, it embeds itself in our memory bank and we can recall it later. Psalm 136 is one that brings the people to a moment of pause, to recall how God provided, to name God's steadfast love and faithfulness throughout their entire journey. From being freed from slavery to life-giving moments, God's steadfast love endures forever. Saving them from the throes of the Red Sea while enduring 40 years in the wilderness. And even though they longed to go back, because remember, the Israelites didn't want to stay where they were. They thought better back was what they knew as normal was better than where they were headed. Even though they would grumble and complain and they would be hungry and think and cry out, how long, O oh Lord? God would continue to provide and God would continue to lead. Because why? God's steadfast love endures forever. In community, together, they told the story. They recorded the story. They proclaimed how they were in awe of God's faithful and steadfast love. This faithfulness, this steadfastness, a commitment of amazing grace, of deep, in it for the long haul, is one that means there is nothing you can do. There is nothing you can do and there is no connection that you can lose because God's love is faithful and steadfast. So it doesn't matter, as we hear every Sunday, it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, where you live, what you, where you come from. There is nothing you can do in which you will lose that faithful, steadfast, connecting love of God. If that doesn't mean to give us reason to say, wow, and be amazed. That might just be enough for now, right? You can wander for 40 years in the wilderness or feel like you're wandering around and God says, I will still love you. Now, as humans, we like to put parameters and conditions on our love for one another. Yet God proclaims, I'm in it for the long haul. And the people are amazed and in awe of the ways that God provided for, cared for, loved, protected, saw, sent support and help. The words of this song, as the community recalls and retells the story of Yahweh's work, brings it from the past into the present for the generations that followed to hear the story and for the storyteller to remember and maybe it was only after the wilderness experience that they were able to take note of the amazing and faithful love and presence of Yahweh. It is in this psalm, people of God, that they are recalling the story and giving a response. Becoming, the response becomes their song and their prayer. God's steadfast love endures forever. When we remember a time when God showed up and shows up in our lives and when we find ourselves in awe and amazed, it is in this remembering that can give us a glimmer of hope. When we remember and recall a time when God shows up, it can give us a glimmer of hope as if to discover that the circumstance we might be facing now might not seem like it, but it will be okay. My friend, Pastor Debbie, from seminary used to say when facing, when we would be facing a test or a major paper or even a life challenge, she would say, well, God didn't bring me this far to drop me. 
because it meant that God's faithful love will endure forever. And God will endure, God's steadfast love will endure forever. Now, truth be told, like this song, there are times when we move into rote memory and become like, yeah, 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 we know God's steadfast love endures forever. Get on with the story. Get to the good part. Did you notice your voice in responding throughout Psalm? Were you like, God's steadfast love endures forever. God's steadfast love endures forever. There's a lot of verses in this Psalm. God's steadfast love endures forever. Are we almost over God's steadfast love? Did you notice that that was happening? You're like, oh, it wasn't just me then, right? But that's what happens. But sometimes in our ropeness, even though we still say it, we can live into it. And even though our voices might have slowed down, became rope or sped up, or we still recalled the words and the promise of God's steadfast and faithful love, enduring forever. And then we resume that normal pace and rhythm and the influx of our voice as we neared the end. People of God, I believe that in the rote recollection of saying these words, saying it as a mantra, God's steadfast love endures forever. We will remember that we are loved and connected and that we are not alone. And that's what gets us through. While other times we can proclaim with great joy and celebration and stand in awe and amazement using all sorts of exclamation points. It becomes a celebration and witness in which it might help others get free. So sometimes, as we talked about last week, in that ropeness, it will be that thread that we can hang on to to get us through. But when we can proclaim it and name it and celebrate it, it becomes the thread that someone else can hang on to and witness. God's steadfast love endures forever. What if... What if we were amazed at God's steadfast love and we shared why? What if we shared the story of a time in our lives when we felt that we were in the depths and in the pit, in the wilderness, and then proclaimed even in the darkness, darkest of days, wow, God, your steadfast love endures and remains faithful. What if this song became our prayer? in which we inserted our own story in these verses and responded with God's steadfast love that endures forever. God, I didn't know how I would survive this day, but your steadfast love endured forever. It was rough. I had difficult conversations, et cetera, et cetera. You can fill in the spots in the blank of the song with your own story and with your life and respond, but your steadfast, faithful love endures forever. And you might think, well, I don't have any major moments in my life that are worth noting, but did you listen to this song? Because the Israelites named the time in which God provided for the most basic needs, food and shelter to the larger than life moments, from slavery to the promised land. Again, we like to overcomplicate things, right? We like to make things way more complicated. And when we do that, it is more likely that we will become less engaged because it just seems so daunting. This is where we just need to keep it simple and just say, wow, can you say why? Okay, good. I saw what you did there, God. Thank you. So this brings us to the final simple and basic aspect of prayer, the wow prayer. The wow prayer is acknowledging God in adoration. When we proclaim, wow, God, we are sending an element of praise and adoration to God. It is a vital part of the Christian faith. Author Douglas Steer writes about in his book, Dimensions of Prayer, when he quotes Baron Frederick von Hugel by saying, any religion 
that ignores the adoration of God is like a triangle with one side left off. You got that image? You can't say it's a triangle if it doesn't have three sides. You can't have help or thanks without the one. Even Maya Angelou acknowledged this idea of being amazed and grateful for God's work in her life. She once said, it's amazing. I can do anything and do it well. And good thing, any good thing, I can do it. That's why I am who I am. Yes, because God loves me. And I am amazed at it. And I am grateful for it. I realize that there are a lot of different ways in which one can pray. It doesn't have to be grand, only faithful. These last three weeks have been just a snippet to provide a framework for you all, for us all to find a rhythm of prayer. One of simplicity, that of help, thanks, and wow. And while these three words and ideas were structured from Anne Lamott's book, Help, Thanks, Wow, there are many other books and additional um, ones that are worthwhile on the reading stack, if you'd like, and books with beautifully written prayers. And I will be sharing these all in a blog post later this week. And so if you're interested, please know that they are available for you to borrow and read and enjoy. But also know that sometimes reading about prayer, maybe we ought to just help thanks well and pray and keep it simple, but they are available. The reality is that it doesn't matter how we pray, just that we do pray, that we engage in a conversation with God, one of praying and acknowledging God as God, lifting up the needs of the ones around us and ourselves by praying help, listening to God in quiet, thanking God for all that God has done, <coughs> it is just a call, <laughs> rest assured. And naming the times in which we have witnessed God at work and been amazed and in awe. The wow factor. <coughs> Even though I went through a 15 minute training before jumping out of a perfectly good plane, I didn't think I was ready. The instructor assured me that I was. You might not think you're ready, but I assure you, you are. <coughs> I assure you that you are ready for when asked to offer a prayer. All you need to do is remember, say it with me, help. So here's your additional prayer invitation. In addition to the 30 seconds of help prayers and the 30 seconds of listening. And last week we added 30 seconds of saying, thank you, God. Pausing to celebrate and give thanks to God for what God has done. We now add 30 more seconds of wow prayers. Prayers where we can catch our breath because our breath was taken away by God's vast and amazing work in our lives. So I invite you now, as we close, that we close in prayer and I will guide us through an abbreviated version of a help thanks wow. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that you are with us and that your steadfast love endures forever. And so we pray that you hear our prayers as we cry out to you Help us, oh God. And now we just listen to you, God. Help us to listen and hear you. And now we say thank you, God. Thank you for. And God, we give you thanks and praise as we proclaim, wow, you are amazing. 
And so, wow, God. For these prayers, we lift them up to you. And all God's children said, Amen. Let's sing together a way that we can acknowledge God's amazing love and be in awe as we sing. We will glorify number 337. We will glorify verses 1, 3, and 4. And then we're going to move right into um, hymn number 34. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's stand and sing together. to be in prayer with and for and alongside one another. And um, there's been no prayer requests that have been shared. The updates will be in the weekly that will get sent out tomorrow, but we can uh, be in prayer for the communities and families who have been shredded and gutted by the injustices that have unfolded in recent days and in years and days and years gone past. I invite you to be in prayer for the missions team and for this congregation as we continue to take the next steps to prepare for welcoming a family from Afghanistan. And so as you consider how you might be involved, your prayers are welcome. I'm going to invite you to respond during the prayer that when you hear, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly King, we offer these our gifts as a sign of love, devotion, and praise. Through these, as through our praises, we acknowledge that you are our Lord. In your name we pray and ask that each of us will understand that our ordinary lives are pleasing to Christ our King. We pray these things, that Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all leaders in government will realize that the ordinary people in our country are important. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all people who are very ordinary, but also are extraordinary because of the way they care for God's people. Lord, in your mercy, hear. We pray for the families who have continued to experience the injustices of this world. We pray that your justice will flow down like an ever-flowing stream, surrounding and sustaining all who grieve and suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
It is in this moment that we remember the lives that ended all too soon because they were told that they were less than and not loved because of who they so desperately longed to be. For the LGBTQ person cast aside and overlooked, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the families and children who are in need of health care and receive it at places like the many children's Shriners Children Hospitals. For the medical teams that work at these hospitals, we pray your healing and your blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For families who are seeking safe refuge, whether here in Kingston due to a housing crisis or coming from afar seeking refuge from a war-torn land, for the family who is preparing to journey to Kingston, we pray your safety, your courage, your sustaining strength and protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the people who are sick and unable to do the ordinary things they used to do, that they will be patient with themselves and with those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For people whose lives are recorded in our newspapers magazine, and magazines, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, King of all kings and Lord of all lords, we ask that in your mercy you hear our prayers. Help us to remember to cry out to you that it is okay to ask for help, to raise our voices of thanksgiving and to stand in awe of all you bring into our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers and the prayers of all your people. Help us to be faithful in ordinary ways, loving and caring for your people whom we meet every day. We ask this through Jesus, your son and our king, who taught us to pray, our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. People of God, as you go forward from this place, well, after you go forward from this place, after the congregational meeting, but as you go forward in your lives, remember to go forward, remembering the promise and the assurance that God's faithful and steadfast love will endure forever and be in awe of it. Look up, look out, look around, and witness and see where God has shown up and just say, wow, God. Thank you, God. And don't be afraid to ask God for help. And so as you go forward, I'm going to invite you once again to stand as we read the, the benediction, the Celtic blessing that's printed in the bulletin together. Following the benediction, you are invited to uh, take a seat and uh, listen to the prelude while we get set up and switched over for the congregational meeting. Friends on Zoom, stay right there. I'm going to be logging in on my computer. We're going to get the camera and the microphone set up to a different um, different area for anybody participating this morning. And so we just need a couple minutes to get everything situated, and then we will move into our meeting. And so, but before that, let's read a blessing and God's blessing to and with one another. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever He may send you. May He guide you through the wilderness protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our hearts. Go in God's peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen.